Okay, go. Hey. Nathan Ray with Rays of Hope. We are using this series to talk about coping skills and practical ways to deal with the stress that can come from crisis and emergency situations. Um, you might notice that I'm dressed for yesterday because yesterday for a lot of our country was Easter Sunday. And although some didn't celebrate, a lot of people did. Our first responders are essential workers. A lot of them had to work yesterday. A lot of people who uh, practice a different faith uh, don't necessarily recognize Easter Sunday. But I think that we were all still aware of it. And so for all of us, we probably observed Easter Sunday in some way, shape, or fashion. Maybe for online church service, may have been chatting with family via the phone or via a video chat. We may have done some outdoor grilling, might have cooked up a nice dinner. And of course, you may have done an Easter egg hunt if you have littles in your household. But the thing is, is that today and yesterday even, you may have been experiencing not just joy and happiness and feelings of connectedness, but at the very same time, you may have been feeling disconnected. You may have been feeling sad. You may have been feeling lost. You may have been feeling grief. Some of that could have come from restrictions around gathering and not being able to go and visit family or have your typical you know, celebration that you do with friends. Some of it may have been missing people who couldn't participate. They weren't able to come to you, or maybe they're just not here anymore. Some of it may be coming from traditions that you had that you weren't able to continue this year because of the crisis and emergency situation that we currently have around our country. Well, I want you to know that it's okay to have those feelings, even though sometimes they feel very opposite. Yes, we can feel grateful for what we have, and we can be disappointed about things that were canceled or weren't able to happen. Yes, we can enjoy time with loved ones, and we can feel overwhelmed by being around our loved ones. Yes, we can be hopeful, and we can feel as if things are falling apart. Yes, we can be a source of support for others and we can prioritize our own needs and ask for help ourselves. It's normal to have contradictory feelings in overwhelming circumstances. Whether that stress is a personal thing, whether it's a family thing, whether it's a town or a region, whether it's our entire country, stress brings out a lot of things around our emotions, our feelings, and our way of dealing with the world around us. And sometimes that's good and bad at the same time. It's emotionally draining. That back and forth, that up and down, that roller coaster feeling as we're going through stress, crisis, and trying to cope takes a lot out of us. Even though we are trying to help others, we often are desperately seeking help ourselves, but don't always know how to ask for it. Sometimes our safe places, your home, the gym, work, sometimes those aren't available to you, and sometimes they just don't feel as safe. If you're accustomed to coming home and having some time for yourself to sit on the couch, maybe watch some TV, read a book, do something to decompress, and instead everyone else is also now home, and as soon as you walk in the door, you're getting barraged, that takes away that feeling of safety and makes it really difficult for you 
to be able to do that decompression, to take care of yourself, and to be able to deal with your family, your roommates, whoever it may be who's living in your home in the fashion in which you normally would. It's a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. people express such a wide variety of how they're feeling and how they're trying to cope, but feeling overwhelmed. We've heard people say, I just feel broken, even as they're continuing to serve others. We've seen people get angry, even while they're encouraging others to stay calm and to have grace and forgiveness. Every time I put on this bunny suit, I have a mix of emotions of my own. It comes from my favorite story, or favorite movie, I should say, A Christmas Story. And if you haven't watched it, I encourage you, get on Amazon, order it, they'll deliver it, or I don't know if it's available on Netflix right now, but check it out. But when I put it on, it reminds me of the movie. When I put it on, it reminds me of hiding Easter eggs for my grandkids. When I put it on, it reminds me of Easter Sunday, 2014, as I put it on and I went and I talked to people who, following the Oso landslide that had happened just a few weeks prior and talked to them about the emotions that they were feeling. And it reminds me of walking through that mud and walking up to people who had been out there for days and weeks at a time and trying to help them find that little spark, that little way of keeping on going. So it's a mix of emotions for me. But did you know that there's another definition of an Easter egg? Right now, at this time of year, we think of Easter eggs as being these little plastic things filled with candy or toys, maybe some little coins, something like that. And we put them out and kids go hunt for them. But in the video game and movie world, an Easter egg is a hidden message or feature in that video game or movie. So in a video game, for example, if the, the game player goes into just the right spot as they're moving through that video game world, or if they do the controls in just the right order, they may come across a hidden message. It might be something as simple as one of the people who worked on it's name. It may have some sort of other little message, or it may unlock a mini game, or even an entirely hidden level of that video game. It's a surprise. It's a delight. It's a way for someone to feel some happiness, even as they're in the middle of trying to figure out what the heck is going on in the video game. In the movie industry, an Easter egg may provide a tie-in to previous movies, whether it's in a, a movie series or whether it's in a world, for example, the world of Marvel Universe, um, you know, Iron Man and the Avengers and all that. Um, it may be that there's a tie that gives people a little hidden gem around a backstory or it may give them a clue as to something that's gonna be happening in the future. Either way, for true fans of the movie, it gives them something unexpected, a little extra secret, a little look into what's going on behind, and a reason to feel excited and hopeful. So today, we'd like to encourage you to look for Easter eggs in your own life. It doesn't necessarily have to be a prize like you would find in one of these little Easter eggs, but it could be that prize, that positive thing in something unexpected that has happened for you in your life as a result of some of the restrictions, some of the stress, some of the crisis that's currently happening. I like to present just 10 little Easter eggs that you might find going on in your own life. Not necessarily all of them. You might not even find any of these in your own life. 
However, these are some things that I've heard and seen related. People are finding new ways of staying socially connected. People are recognizing things in their life from other people that they didn't realize were super important, but actually are. People are also finding out that some of the things that they used to think were very important maybe aren't quite as key to life and they're finding other ways to enjoy what's going on. People are finding ways of deepening their relationships, both with household and family members, as well as using social media, video chat, phones, etc. to stay connected in ways that they never did before. People are finding new ways conducting business. They're getting on Facebook Live, they're getting on Zoom, they're getting on Skype, they're emailing, they're doing lots of different things in order to be able to conduct business since they can't do it in person. Some people reported that they're completing projects, whether at home or at work, that they haven't previously been able to do. Maybe they now have the time because they're not going into the office and they have extra time in their day. Maybe they're finding things to do around the house that they weren't able to previously. Some people have talked about learning new skills or finding new interests because they're trying to find ways to pass the time and to be productive. Other people are dusting off old skills or picking up old interests that they had left once left behind. I've heard of people picking up making blankets, you know, crocheting and knitting. I've heard of people doing crafts. Um, I have a brother who has decided to redo his entire uh, kitchen table and furniture in the apartment and give them a new, new coat and make them look brand new. Maybe it's not something concrete like that, but maybe you're now getting recognition for the role that you play in society. If you're an essential worker, they're getting a lot of newfound respect because people didn't always recognize how essential you were. And the, the tenth idea that we want to bring to you is that you may be reevaluating your life and finding a different job, a different career, or a new role in the same field that you want to pursue. And so you're finding ways to do that. If none of those things are going on, that's okay. I'm not urging you to be productive because people are not necessarily just working from home. People are attempting to work at home while working in a crisis and emergency situation. Give yourself some grace on that, but look for those Easter eggs in your life. As we go through social unity and physical distancing, if we focus on the little things, those little surprises, we can bring an entirely different focus to what's happening with us and to what's happening around us. I want to encourage you to look at the positive. I'm going to pull my computer over here because I want to be able to read this correctly. This is something that a friend of mine shared earlier today. It's translated from Select Karasiak in Brazil and it says we are not in the same boat. I heard that we're in the same boat but that isn't accurate. We are in the same storm not the same boat. My boat might shipwreck and yours not or vice versa. For some staying at home is an optimal time for reflection, reconnection, housework, spring cleaning, flip-flops, having a whiskey, wine, coffee, or tea. For others, this is a desperate crisis. For some, peace, a time of rest, or a holiday. For other, torture and stress about how am I going to pay my bills. Some are busy choosing chocolates for Easter. Other wor others are worried about having bread by the end of the week. Some are in the home office. Others are eating trash to survive. Some want to go back to work 
because they're running out of money. Others want to kill those who break quarantine. Some need to go out to line up for needs, and others are angry with those who aren't isolating. Some are more social than ever, and others are lonely. Some put faith in God and expect miracles. Others say the worst is yet to come, and yet others are a mix. So folks, we're not in the same boat. We are having a time when our perceptions and needs are completely different and each one of us will come out of this storm in our own way. Some with a tan, others with a stress and seemingly overwhelming burden. For reasons obvious or not, it is very important to look for others' perspectives. See beyond political parties, beyond religion, and beyond yourself. Don't judge, belittle, or condemn because you don't know other situations. We may not know who lacks and who has plenty. We're on different boats. Everyone sails their own route during this storm. Thank you so much for joining yet another How to Heal When You Have to Deal. Remember, find the Easter eggs in your life. And if you want to know more, reach out to us here at Rays of Hope. Have a good evening.